I'm ready for the Russian ambassador. Who did your makeup? We went for something dramatic. Do you like it? You look like a badger. Oh. Are you going to cry? Really? Well, what do you think you look like? Badger. Do you really think you can meet the Russian delegation looking like that? No. It's just really pertinent that I look like a badger right now. The Favourite is a 2018 film directed by the wonderful Yorgos Lanthimos. It tells the story of Queen Anne and her political and romantic affairs with Sarah Churchill and Abigail Masham. Of course, the film romanticizes these relationships, and while they were romantic, the drive behind these relationships was a lot more political apparently than portrayed. I don't have all the information, but I did watch a really informative video on LGBTQ plus royalty, and I will go ahead and link that down below. But watching the film for a second time, I came to realize that there's this huge theme about boundaries and how they work in love. So that's what we're going to do today. Dissect the relationship between Queen Anne and Sarah and Queen Anne and Abigail, and break down how both of their relationships show that boundaries are equal to love. I want to disclose that I'm not a psychologist, I'm not any sort of psychology person, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, oh I took Psych 101 and now I know everything. Not the case. I'm speaking on the film based on my analysis from re-watching it recently, some light research I've done on boundaries, and my own personal experiences. Shout out to my therapist. Sarah, you must say hello to little ones. No. It is macabre. Please. No. I love you, but that I will not do. If you love me, love has limits. It should not. So how does one define a boundary? Let's look at the definition of a boundary as we're talking about it today. Limits that define acceptable behavior. Queen Anne poor, sick, lonely Queen Anne. She was a victim of herself and the status that she was born with. Queen Anne and many other people in her position do not understand or care about boundaries. It doesn't help that the nature of royalty is to never be denied. Her relationship with many people seems to be defined as parent-child, even in romantic situations. The reason for the parent-child relationship is because Queen Anne is completely unable to take care of herself emotionally. She is completely emotionally dependent on her lovers and others around her to make every decision for her, to guide her, to help her find out the smallest things from what she's going to wear to how she addresses her royal duties. Sarah, Queen Anne's longest partner and closest friend, I use the term friend because technically Sarah was married and although they were in a romantic relationship, I don't think it was ever labeled as more mostly making a joke with like the friend. Wink. Sarah is a bright, confident woman who has the interest of her husband's safety at heart as well as the interest of Queen Anne's happiness. Sarah does not use the relationship with Anne to her advantage, but she still loves her. She loves Anne enough to say no to her. Sarah does not treat Anne like the queen because to her, she is more. She is a real person who is not just defined by her status. Sarah is able to disagree with Anne without fear. Sarah may want to work in her favor by the side of the queen, but she doesn't want anything from the queen. She doesn't want status, she doesn't want fame or notoriety. Sarah is perfectly capable of holding her own and has enough of a hand in the royal courts that she doesn't need Anne in order to ensure the safety of her husband and the success of her country. Boundaries between Anne and Sarah symbolize confidence in their relationship. When someone doesn't have boundaries, typically it's because they want something. It doesn't have to be material things and it's not always with selfish or malicious intent. Some cases include want for acceptance, love, approval. Anne and Sarah already had those things for each other. But Abigail, on the other hand, she does need something, and the Queen is the perfect avenue to get it. Abigail only cares about Anne because she needs something from her. Abigail has had a fall from her higher status in life and wants it back. If she can get in with Queen Anne, butter her up, and get on her good side, she can have her life back. As the film develops, you can see the decline in graceful behavior, niceness, and care that Abigail has towards the Queen and in general. 
She literally doesn't like her husband, but has tricked him and Queen Anne into wedlock so that she could get what she wanted, a lavish lifestyle that she feels entitled to. There are no boundaries with Queen Anne and Abigail, and it's shown in a couple of ways. One, language. Abigail never disagrees with the queen and literally kisses her ass, never says no to her, indulges her with whatever she wants to hear. Two, action. The end of the movie. Look at the final scene. Queen Anne is forcing Abigail to rub her legs by grabbing her by the hair and pushing her down. That is a huge lack of physical boundaries. And since Abigail accepts it, it shows that she is truly indebted to the queen to maintain her lifestyle. This is a lack of boundaries based on fear and dependence. So although Abigail thinks she has come out on top, she's really just a doormat for the queen. While the queen isn't really cared for by Abigail and has completely lost Sarah at this point. The end of the movie seems to be the moment where Queen Anne realizes what love really is and how Sarah gave her real love. It also seems to be the moment where Abigail realizes that she will never stop being a servant. She will just be better dressed while taking orders. Abigail and the queen don't really know each other and the queen is so emotionally immature that she is surprised that Abigail is not the person she thought she was based on her words. Abigail is manipulative and doesn't really care about Queen Anne, but knows that she's fully dependent on her. It's a toxic, codependent relationship that, with added boundaries, would more than likely crumble. So the big takeaway I had from rewatching The Favorite is that boundaries are healthy and they are the truest way to know and accept someone, which at the end of the day is a recipe for real love. Thank you so much for the watch. I hope you enjoyed this analysis and I would love to hear your thoughts below. If you enjoy all things film and entertainment related, why don't you go ahead and hit that thick old subscribe button and I'll see you back here real soon.